Diapsalmata from Either Or, 1843, by Soren Kierkegaard, translated by Lee M. Hollander, in 1923. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. What is a poet? An unhappy man who conceals profound anguish in his heart, but whose lips are so fashioned that when sighs and groans pass over them, they sound like beautiful music. His fate resembles that of the unhappy men who were slowly roasted by a gentle fire in the tyrant Phalaris's bull. Their shrieks could not reach his ear to terrify him. To him they sounded like sweet music and people flock about the poet and say to him do sing again which means would that new sufferings tormented your soul and would that your lips stayed fashioned as before for your cries would only terrify us but your music is delightful and the critics join them saying well done thus must it be according to the laws of ascetics why, to be sure, a critic resembles a poet as one pea another, the only difference being that he has no anguish in his heart and no music on his lips. Behold, therefore would I rather be a swine herd on Amagar and be understood by the swine than a poet and misunderstood by men. In addition to my numerous other acquaintances, I still have one more intimate friend, my melancholy. In the midst of pleasure, in the midst of work, he beckons to me, calls me aside, even though I remain present bodily. My melancholy is the most faithful sweetheart I have had. No wonder that I return the love. Of all ridiculous things, the most ridiculous seems to me to be busy, to be a man who is brisk about his food and his work. Therefore, whenever I see a fly settling in the decisive moment on the nose of such a person of affairs, or if he is splattered with mud from a carriage which drives past him in great haste, or the drawbridge opens up before him, or a tile falls down and knocks him dead, then I laugh heartily and who indeed could help laughing what i wonder do these busy folks get done are they not to be classed with the woman who in her confusion about the house being on fire carried out the fire tongs what things of great account do you suppose they will rescue from life's great conflagration let others complain that the times are wicked i complain that they are paltry for they are without passion the thoughts of men are thin and frail like lace, and they themselves are feeble like girl lace-makers. The thoughts of their hearts are too puny to be sinful. For a worm it might conceivably be regarded as sin to harbor thoughts such as theirs. Not for a man who is formed in the image of God. Their lusts are staid and sluggish, their passions sleepy. They do their duty, these sordid minds, but permit themselves, as did the Jews, to trim the coins just the least little bit, thinking that if our Lord keep tab of them ever so carefully, one might yet safely venture to fool him a bit. Fie on them! It is therefore my soul ever returns to the Old Testament and to Shakespeare. There at least one feels that one is dealing with men and women there one hates and loves there one murders one's enemy and curses his issue through all generations there one sins just as according to the legend parmeniscus in the trophonian cave lost his ability to laugh but recovered it again on the island of delos at the sight of a shapeless block which was exhibited as the image of the goddess leto likewise did it happen to me when i was very young i forgot in the trophonian cave how to laugh but when i grew older and opened my eyes and contemplated the real world i had to laugh 
and have not ceased laughing ever since i beheld that the meaning of life was to make a living its goal was to become chief justice that the delights of love consisted in marrying a woman with ample means that it was the blessedness of friendship to help one another in financial difficulties that wisdom was what most people supposed it to be that it showed enthusiasm to make a speech and courage to risk being fined ten dollars that it was cordiality to say may it agree with you after a repast that it showed piety to partake of the communion once a year i saw that and laughed a strange thing happened to me in my dream i was wrapped into the seventh heaven there sat all the gods assembled as a special dispensation i was granted the favor to have one wish do you wish for youth said mercury or for beauty or power or a long life or do you wish for the most beautiful woman or any other of the many fine things we have in our treasure trove choose but only one thing for a moment i was at a loss then i addressed the gods in this wise most honorable contemporaries i choose one thing that i may always have the laugh on my side not one god made answer but all began to laugh from this i concluded that my wish had been granted and thought that the gods knew how to express themselves with good taste for it would surely have been inappropriate to answer gravely your wish has been granted end of diapsalmata from either or eighteen forty three by soren kierkegaard